We just got the train down to Rockingham and uh, just on me rain bike, me trusty rim brake clincher tyre bike. And uh, it made me think, you know, why did the bike industry change from clincher tyres to the now disc brake system? And so they could remove the brake track away from the, the edge of the clincher hook down to the, the hub of the wheel. And what was the motivation for this? And a lot of people, you know, go oh, extra braking and all this. Well, let's just roll an intro and let's have a bit of a discussion about why would the bike industry redesign the whole bicycle just for a braking system? Well, we had rim brakes and we had aluminium rims, like I've got on my bike, and that was all the go, and aluminium rims were the new technology because they had come away from steel square box wheels and gone to aluminium and then of course as technology developed uh, we had carbon frames and then they started making carbon wheels and they started making carbon clinches and that's when all the problems started with the rim brake technology now with aluminium rims there really wasn't an issue because the the way that aluminium for uh, brakes, it cracks and it gives you a warning that's about to fail. But carbon rims don't. And also aluminium rims can dissipate heat better than carbon does. So if you're doing long descents and you're braking, what could happen is with the carbon is once it got the temperatures around about 200 degrees C, the resins would start to go soft and the air pressure that was holding the tire on the rim by the hooks on the clincher rim would start to move away from the tire and then we would actually get a, a failure of the tire blowing off the rim because the clincher sidewalls have given way due to the temperature and the softness of the resins in the carbon rim. And this was a real problem for the manufacturers. So what they started to experiment with is different types of resins and they wanted resins that could be fitted to the brake track and what those resins could do is they could handle the temperatures from long descents that were building up in the clincher area of the of the actual rim, the carbon rim. And uh, that wasn't too successful and also the resins were very, very expensive so they kind of were reluctant to go that way. Some manufacturers even tried to move the braking tracks away from the actual hooks and move them down closer to the spokes. But of course, due to the frame design, you can only do this so much. Well, anyway, this created a massive problem for the manufacturers because more and more people wanted carbon clincher rims, you know, that with deep sections and looked really sexy. So what they had to do, they had to come up with some sort of solution for this because it was a safety liability. And that's where disc brakes come into the, to the scene. Just had a couple of kangaroos here at the at the hospital they've it's a the hospital is situated near a lake and some protected lands i think it's a reserve or something around here so there's quite a lot of native animals and uh, when i went to tie my bike up and lock it up just around the back of the hospital there was a couple of kangaroos there so um they actually sneaked past me and uh, were eating some grass off the lawn area so yeah just a little treat to see the kangaroos down here at the rockingham hospital Yeah, so that's how disc brakes birthed into the road cycling industry. It wasn't because they were trying to develop a better braking system or, you know, that rim brakes didn't work uh, appropriately. It's because there was specifically carbon clinches were an issue. And of course, you know, once that they tried to fix this problem and it really kind of was not cost effective or the, um, the moving of the brake track really didn't work out for them because I don't know if you look at a clincher rim you can see that the brake track is right behind the hook of what holds on the tire so moving the the braking system away from the rim obviously would completely fix this because then the clincher rim wouldn't have any heat applied to it at the at the braking surface or the sorry at the hooks which hold on the tire so of course then you've solved the problem. But of course, to put a disc at the hub of the wheel is a huge different engineering feat. And 
disc brake bikes have actually been around for quite a long time and, and Specialized were one of the first brands attempted to do this and they had a narrower track at the back between the axles and it's very actually very hard to get those those rims. Uh, one of the guys in the comments was actually talking about that how he had a narrower disc brake bike and just find it very hard to get wheels to fit it and so they've developed over time and then we've gone to the flat mount and we've now got concealed hydraulic cables and there has been some huge developments in the disc brake world so guys that's why i'm going to leave it for this video talking about the disc brakes and now we're going to jump into comments corner now as i commented before one of the comments that was put up was that uh, you know that uh, his bike that he'd bought had the now 135 millimeter rear dropouts with a through axle and disc brake and what was happening with that is that uh, he had a wanted to get a new wheel because he, he broke the wheel i'm not too sure how he broke it but he had an accident he broke the wheel and he wanted to get a new wheel and that format or that hub axle he found very very difficult to get and this is a bit of a problem with the bicycle industry because they keep bringing out new things that are really um, backward compatible and this is one of them so what we've had is with disc brakes we've actually gone through two uh two steps of, of development and the first one was a narrower dropout and now we've gone to 142 mil dropout so he's having a real difficulty finding one of the older rims and at some point his bike's going to be completely obsolete and he won't be able to get parts for it and uh, i hope this is not going to happen with rim brakes because not everyone wants to ride a brand new bike some people like to ride older bikes or restore older bikes and it's going to make it more difficult to get parts and find parts for them when you can't buy new parts that are not compatible 